Alright everyone, this is Moxum, and uh, I want to welcome you to this video. Today I want to go over uh, the position of my WMD performance mixer. Uh, for those who are new to this device, uh, you may not know, but I actually have this upside down. Um, and the reason that I did that, if we kind of take a look from the outside of everything, when I was trying to figure out which mods to put where in the case I took a look at where the majority of the outputs and inputs of those devices were and then based on that I kind of organized them in a way that opened up as much of the inside of the case as possible so that I could use that all as playable area without having the wires in the way so for two reasons uh, I decided to have this upside down. I really like the feel of moving these downward if I want to bring them in. If I want to bring the sound in, so these are currently off. So these are normally would be flipped upside down. And you can really flip anything upside down. You'll notice too that I have the Neutron upside down, one of the two of them. It really doesn't bother me. Um, once I know what all the, you know, it takes a, a, a few days, uh, a little bit of use to get acclimated to but then once you do it does the same thing whether it's upside down or not if you turn it this way it goes up you turn it that way it goes down so same thing with the mixing board I really like this you can kind of consider this like a, a mini first impression of this mixing board which is phenomenal I really like it I really like that you have uh, independent stereo LEDs I really like that you have queuing I don't know that I'll use the cue buttons but it's probably handy if you were just DJing some stuff. Uh, I'm using the mono output, which is really nice. That's going off to um, my tuner. So when I tune my oscillators, that's always there. Um, it, it's got outputs, uh, effects bus outputs and inputs for two effects buses. And you can use that on any of the channels. And you can flip between one or the other. And you also have a mix for it and you have a pre and post fader and I know that the pre means that you can have the volume of it all the way down and you can send it to your effect and it will be a hundred percent in the mix which is nice and then you can control how much wet you're gonna get um, or dry you can you can put in with the wet okay so no effect you can add in with effect which is nice uh, if you have it, I'm not quite sure what the center position is, but if you have it post, then you have to turn it up and you're gonna get wet and, and dry, uh, to the best of my knowledge. Um, there's also, an, what I'm not using right now, it's not populated, uh, but eventually I'd like to have, this is a, uh, an effects send bus that's stereo. Oh, I might mention the effects send one and two are, are mono, which is fine for me. Uh, and also, uh, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and I've added little plastic knobs over these gains. Uh, but you've got six monos and two stereos, which is also fine. And it's expandable for two more channels, which currently it's eight channels, and it'll get you ten channels. You've also got CV control for the levels of each, so you can control voltage levels, and you have control voltage over pan. And you'll see uh, these move back and forth. One will dim, one will light up as you pan, and you also have a dedicated pan knob, which is really nice, and a dedicated gain. And then each channel uh, of the first six channels, it gives you, it gives you um, an A-B switch, so you have two inputs. So like you could have a kick drum, two kick drums going into your A and B, which is how I typically use uh, this channel. And then you've got your regular output. You've got a master volume and a Q mix, which is really nice, just like you would have on a DJ mixer. Uh, the other thing that uh, I found really fantastic was if you go too high on your levels <clears throat> with your gain or whatever your input is, there's little LEDs inside of these plastic covers and in these faders uh, that will light up. And that's really nice. And uh, Maybe people uh, play clipping with the red. I tend to keep it um, just on the edge of the green. And I notice that they don't come on until right till you cross over that threshold, uh, which looks like about 
uh, positive 12 dB. The headphones jack is nice. Uh, yeah, that's really about all I have to say for that. But uh, again, uh, you know, this is in Moxon position. This is upside down. And I encourage you to, to try that out if you have this mixer on the bottom uh, of a case. You may want to think about that because you may not want to have to uh, move your hands around wires and stuff. So I tried to keep that in mind. I was kind of forced by what was available when I purchased wires initially and ended up with a lot of 100 millimeters and 150 millimeters, which is a pretty good size. I would recommend that if you wanted to kind of route things around the outside um, of your case or maybe even dip them in and out of uh, a couple HP gap in any of your gear, which we'll have to see how this goes after all that's gone because I imagine I might eventually uh, here be running out of HP. So, But anyway, I just wanted to talk about that and uh, thanks for watching the video. Everyone have a great day and uh, peace.